my uh, manager had approached me one day while I was uh, cleaning toilets and whatnot. And uh, he asked me, uh, he, he said, I need to talk to you in my office. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, well, now I'm up on the chopping block. <laughs> I've had this conversation before. Yeah, he, he pulls me into the office and I'll, and I'll never forget this conversation. He says, Jared, and he paused long enough just for dramatic effect. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm getting my pink slip. Hey, fellow workers, this is Kim Sieber. You are tuning in to episode five of the second season of the Alberta Worker Podcast. We are proud members of the Labor Radio Network, as well as new of this season, members of the Harbinger Media Network. We are broadcasting from the territory of the Nitsapi, and today's guest is Jared Lang, a Red Seal journeyman welder here in Lethbridge. Welcome, Jared. Hi, Kim. It's nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, great to have you. I'm looking forward to having a discussion with you. So let's just get straight into it. Um, just tell us your life story, you know, where you grew up, what your family life was like, education, you know, that kind of stuff. As well, talk about your labor history. You can either integrate that with your life story or tell us afterwards, you know, what your first job was, the jobs you had after that, what you're doing now, your journey to get to that point, that sort of thing. Floor is all yours. All right. Well, where to start? I guess uh, there's no better place to start than the beginning. I was born in a small town in southern Alberta called uh, Carchton. It's a Mormon town, as uh, I'm sure some people may be aware of. But yeah, so I was raised in a very conservative Christian household. Was it a Mormon household or a different Christian denomination? Uh, no, I was I was born and raised LDS. I oh, okay. don't practice. I'm still LDS on paper, but I guess there's a terminology out there. People call them Jack Mormons. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with that. I'm a Jack. I was just curious if maybe you had been Baptist and I was going to ask what it was like to grow up Baptist in a Mormon community, but I guess. Yeah. So uh, my dad, uh, he's a tradesperson himself. He's a journeyman, uh, auto body mechanic slash mechanic by trade. But, you know, in the early 90s there, there wasn't, uh, you know, the whole street wheelers thing and the street machine that didn't really take off for a few more years. So, you know, he was struggling in his line of work. So we ended up moving up to Edmonton when I was very young. I couldn't tell you how old I was. I was just uh, very young and he decided to get a teaching certificate. So uh, yeah, we moved up to Edmonton. We were there for a bit. Then, you know, when he was done his university schooling for teaching, we moved to a town called Fairview. I think I was in kindergarten, grade one and grade two in that school. And uh, we were there for a bit. He didn't end up uh, getting a permanent teaching job uh, you know they start on their temporary and then they you know either get hired on permanently or not so from there we ended up moving to a town called St. Paul Alberta okay For those of you don't know St. Paul Alberta they're world famous you can look it up in the Guinness Book of Records and uh, other sources back uh, in 65 for the centennial I believe it was the federal government or maybe it was the provincial governments. I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, uh, municipalities were getting monies for, you know, centennial stuff to celebrate 100 years of, you know, being Canada. St. Paul's idea for their centennial project was the world's first UFO landing pad. <laughs> I moved there as a young kid. I was about eight years old or so. I started grade three in St. Paul. And, you know, when I first moved there, I thought it was the absolute most fascinating, coolest thing in the world, this UFO landing pad. You know, sure. the school I went to was right across the street from it. I got to see it every day when I was playing outside. And it was just, it was cool. It was cool. And, you know, I got, as I got older, you know, watching sci-fi movies and everything, I realized, you know, maybe it's not as cool as I thought it was because I've seen enough sci-fi movies uh, to know that, you know, if uh, aliens did exist and they were coming to Earth, they definitely wouldn't be coming in peace because the only ships that would be able to land on this landing pad would be warships. <laughs> I think it kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, building something to welcome an alien race in here. You know, they're not going to be civil about it if they're coming here to command and conquer anyways. So, yeah, I spent a good majority of my life. I grew up in St. Paul. Uh, I attended grades 3 to 12 in St. Paul, Alberta. There wasn't a very high LDS population. I was one of the very few members of the church in that town. So a lot of my friends weren't members. And, you know, people that were my age that were members, uh, we didn't get along very well. Oh, okay. Very weird kid growing up. I'm sure if I uh, ever bumped into classmates, 
you know, again, from growing up, they remember me as the odd guy. I was, uh, yeah, I was an oddball growing up anyway. So um, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I went through grades three to 12. I was a problem child. I guess, uh, you know, there was family issues and stuff growing up. My dad was uh, very uh, totalitarian, very patriarchal, you know, my way or the highway. And he was also into corporal punishment. Oh, okay. So I don't know how much further I want to, I want to go into that. That's fine. Uh, maybe I'm just uh, potentially fearful of the family backlash <laughs> if I go too far into that. We'll leave it at that. He was uh, very old school and into uh, capital punishment. So a little bit about the labor history. I started out as, you know, any other young man. I think some of the first jobs I had was, you know, shoveling snow in the wintertime for cash and, you know, mowing lawns. I remember doing that even as young as eight or nine years old. And then I officially joined the taxable workforce at 15 years old. I've been working since. Started in the service industry. My first taxable job was McDonald. Hey, me too. You know, it's funny. I only got the job because my older brother had worked there as well. So, you know, connections, you know, I was pretty much instantaneously hired. There was, you know, we obviously went through the formal interview and everything, but yeah, I was, I was pretty much hired on. Oh, I guess that's another thing I could touch on about uh, family. So uh, yeah, I'm one of five siblings. Um, I have uh, two brothers and three sisters. I'm the middle boy. And so yeah, I, I started off uh, working at McDonald's. And then, you know, I, uh, like I mentioned, I worked a and I worked Subway, I've worked KFC. Um, I worked at the movie theater in town for a little bit. And uh, I even uh, had a brief job working some radio, local radio station in town would buy feed from 630 Ched in Edmonton. You know, I worked uh, when they were broadcasting the uh, Edmonton Oilers games. I would flip switches and sub out 630 Cheds commercials for local commercials of our own, but the whole entire hockey game was bought and purchased. Like all that feed was purchased oh, okay. from 630 Ched. So yeah, I was just flipping switches and replacing, you know, Edmonton area commercials with, you know, local commercials of our own. And the uh, radio station was called uh, 1310 CHLW. It doesn't exist anymore. They've rebranded since. And uh, I mean, it was a country station. They still play country, but they don't go by that name anymore. That's cool. And then I graduated high school at 18 years old. I could have graduated a, a semester early, but uh, instead of doing four core subjects in one semester, so, you know, uh, four diplomas at the end of that one semester, I just decided to split it up two and two. And so I only had half days for the whole entire grade 12 year. I went to school in the morning time and then, you know, I came home you know, did what teenage boys do. And then I went to work because like I say, I started working at uh, 15 years old. Yeah, I graduated high school. I didn't graduate with honors. I wasn't a valedictorian. I was just happy to be done. No doubt. I was so much in a rush to grow up and yeah, I was just ready to be an adult. And then that's when my uh, life in the trades started. Ever since I turned 18 and graduated high school, I've been in the trades ever since. I've worked various labor jobs. So my first job out of high school, I was a cribber. I worked concrete. We did it all. We poured foundations. We poured uh, floors. We did garage. Uh, we did uh, aprons, as we call them, or um, like, uh, you know, driveways, sidewalks. Okay. Okay. I did that for a few years and, you know, it was uh, another abusive scenario for me. I just remember my boss yelling at me a lot. It was so extra and, you know, it didn't matter if I was doing the best I possibly could. I always felt like it still wasn't good enough because I was always getting yelled at. And maybe that's because, I, you know, I was young and naive and didn't have, you know, very much sense or knowledge in the way of boundaries. And I just let the guy yell at me and, you know, it built up and it built up and it built up and, uh, you know, I, uh, well, I just walked off the job one day and then I was back to stocking grocery shelves for a little bit. And then uh, I actually ended up working for that employer again, a second time around, a uh, very brief stint. Then uh, I went to Canadian Tire um, in St. Paul from there. I worked there for a little bit and then I decided it was time for a change. You know, I'm a young, young adult. I'm still, <laughs> you know, stuck in this small town of like, Oh, uh, it was like no more than 5,000 people at the time. I don't know what the population is now. I don't, uh, I don't keep tabs on that kind of stuff, but I was ready for a change. Yeah. I have family down here in Southern Alberta. I have a lot of extended family, lots of cousins and whatnot. So I figured Lethbridge, that's a good place to be because, you know, everybody that I graduated with and wanted nothing to do with all moved to Edmonton. <laughs> 
like I say, I just uh, needed a fresh start. So yeah, I uh, moved down to Lethbridge and I've been here ever since. I've been in Lethbridge, Alberta for almost 14 years now. It'll be 14 years here in the fall. Yeah, it's 25 for us last month. 25 years. Wow. Yeah. That's a quarter of a century, Kim. <laughs> I've now lived because I was almost 25 years old when we moved here. And so now I've lived here for more than half my life. I've lived in Lethbridge, which is so weird to think about. My entire adult life has been spent in Lethbridge. Like, yeah, sure. I lived in St. Paul for, you know, oh, about 12 to 18 months, you know, after I graduated, before I moved down to Lethbridge. But I haven't lived anywhere else since I've been here for, yeah, like I say, almost 14 years now. And uh, the first job I got, um, still kind of sorted in the trades. It was a temporary position at uh, Atlantic Inc., also known as uh, the Rogers Sugar Factory. That's just a Tabor uh, outfit. They have one in Montreal and another one here in Canada. I think it's in BC somewhere. I think so. So anyways, uh, yeah, I worked there temporarily, uh, you know, seasonal work. And I worked there as a laborer. So, you know, uh, I did a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Got to drive some skid steers, operated quite a bit of shovels, like, you know, manual shovels, power pallet jacks, non-power pallet jacks. Uh, I worked with uh, a lot of chemicals. Some of the stuff that goes into the process of refining sugar literally requires you to dress up in a hazmat suit. And and yeah, I put on a hazmat suit a couple of times because uh, caustic acid is what it's called. And it's extremely corrosive to your skin and lungs and whatnot. Wow. Dooted up to the nines in PPE. So yeah, that was part of that. And then uh, obviously the season came to an end. And, you know, being that it was a seasonal position, I get laid off, right? Not a big deal. Uh, you know, that wasn't the first time that I've been on the EI train. I rode the EI bus for a little bit. And then I got another labor job at a place called uh, Hanlon Ad Adco here in Lethbury, uh, heavy equipment dealership that deals in farm equipment. And I was a wash boy. Okay. I did mow lawns. I got to ride, uh, you know, that was actually my first experience. I'd never ridden a ride on lawnmower. That was a really good learning experience for me. So yeah, I washed out dirty, caked on agricultural equipment. And uh, then from there, I just ended up hitting a wall with that job. I didn't feel like I was going anywhere. No doubt. I guess I failed to mention, I, I'm an adult living with attention deficit hyperactive disorder. So uh, I require a lot of uh, stimulation to my brain and I can get bored very easily just with, you know, even life in general. Like, you know, if I don't feel like I'm growing or progressing very far in a job and, uh, you know, I hit that wall. Well, I got to find something else, right? I got to keep that. I got to keep that brain occupied and I got to use my energy in a constructive manner. Totally. Got on with a, a concrete outfit here <clears throat> in Southern Alberta, you know, because I had previous concrete experience. I worked with them for a little bit and I stopped working for them because it was another one of those uh, abusive environment. This is my personal experience. Um, you know, in the trades world, uh, I, I'm not afraid to admit it. I don't have any shame of this terminology anymore, but uh, there's something called a snowflake. Yeah, I'd say I identify as a, a snowflake because I have emotional intelligence and I expect to be treated. And, you know, uh, emotional intelligence maybe isn't necessarily something that's valued in the trades world. They might not put a, a lot of weight onto that. So, yeah, you know, yet again, I was getting yelled at and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, that just brings back memories because I got yelled at a lot as a child, right? Like, right. you know, sometimes I deserved it. Like I said, I was a problem child. I probably deserved some of the yelling that happened to me, but you know, young impressionable minds get conditioned, right? And certain things trigger them. So I left that job and uh, I went to be a laborer <clears throat> at a place called Charlton and Hill Welding okay. for a few years as a material handler. I did everything. I drove forklift. I staged parts. Uh, I cleaned toilets. Wasn't above cleaning toilets. The fit men to keep in busy because, you know, my personal philosophy is I go to work to work. I don't like to go to work and waste my employer's time. I'm a productive worker and, you know, I go out there and I give it my all. And, you know, one day the manager at the time had approached me. You know, this was uh, during a time when they were going through massive layoffs. Like we 
went from over 500 employees over the course of many months to, you know, almost down to a hundred. Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe don't quote me on those numbers. <laughs> um, that might be an embellishment or an exaggeration being that we're talking, you know, this is uh, pretty much over a decade ago. But anyways, we had lost a lot of people in a very, very short period of time because, you know, uh, Charlton and Hills uh, Bread and bar- Butter is building fracking equipment. So we're kind of direct oh, okay. to the oil and gas industry, right? So as that goes up and down, you know, that creates ripple effects in the economy, uh, you know, especially to places that are directly tied to the oil field. They're going to feel the pinch first. So anyways, my uh, manager had approached me one day while I was uh, cleaning toilets and whatnot. And uh, he asked me, uh, he, he said, I need to talk to you in my office. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, but well, now I'm up on the chopping block. <laughs> I've had this conversation before. Yeah, uh, he, he pulls me into the office and I'll, and I'll never forget this conversation. He says, Jared, and he paused long enough just for dramatic effect. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm getting my pink slip, blah, blah, blah. He's like, Jared, have you ever considered working in the trades? Well, you know, after, you know, reality came in, I kind of calmed down a little bit. Uh, yeah, I said, yeah, I, I, I thought about it. I told him, I said, I kind of saw myself being a mechanic at that point in time and he's like oh well i'm not looking for com- mechanics right now per se <laughs> i'm kind of looking for welders and you know uh with your work ethic uh you're a hard worker i think you could do really good at it and you know i said yeah sure i'll try it out i've never welded before i never took shop class back in high school i was you know more so the home economics kind of guy you know learning how to cook for myself and you know keep care of a kitchen and you know i did financial management understood how to run a budget stuff like that i never took shop class never welded before sure it's an opportunity yeah uh fast forward you know almost 10 years in the future now uh, i'm a red seal journeyman welder all because and you know i tell this to people where i work all the time scrubbing toilets got me to where i'm at today i can't say for sure because you know the future is always in motion but you know if i wasn't cleaning toilets at one particular day i might have missed the opportunity that eventually led to where I'm at today. Sure. I did my first year with them and then, you know, layoffs. I, I eventually got my pink slip. Uh, from there, I bounced around from, you know, welding job to welding job. I butted heads with uh, a lot of people. <laughs> I have uh, issues with authority. <laughs> the Alberta Worker Podcast is a proud member of the Labor Radio Podcast Network. Here's a jingle from another member of the network. Hey folks, it's Bama Athreya, your host on The Geek Podcast. You can find us on Stitcher, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. And this show is now part of the Labor Radio Podcast Network. You can discover more than just us by visiting their website at laborradionetwork.org. The Labor Radio Network will help you find your favorite union podcast or radio show, besides this one, of course. And now, back to the show. You're listening to the Alberta Worker Podcast. Yeah, I I am a very uh, strong-willed, bullheaded, opinionated person. And, uh, you know, as I got older, I had no problems. You know, like I had mentioned before, when I was younger, I kind of didn't have the sense of boundaries and, you know, uh, didn't really care to tell people, no, you can't treat me like that. You can't yell at me. You can't do this. And, you know, as I got older, I got wiser to that. So, yeah, you know, most jobs that I've ever held in my life were no more than 24 to 36 months, save that Charlton and Hill job when I was a material handler slash uh, apprentice welder with them. That was about four or five years. And then every other welding job since then, yeah, it has been about no more than 24 to 36 months. Anyways, I think, uh, yeah, a lot of them actually were almost a year or less. So yeah, I've worked for a few different welding companies during the years. Then, you know, fast forward, to the pandemic. Were you a Red Seal journeyman by this point? Been a Red Seal journeyman welder since uh, December 2017. So it'll be six years this fall. Yeah, so I started in the trade uh, March 2014. I got my blue book and I was officially indentured. Cool. I also got married and then I got divorced and separated. So I was a single parent uh, going through a divorce during the pandemic. And uh, so I, you know, I was riding the Serb train like uh, a lot of people. I had 
uh, you know, an EI claim, you know, going into, you know, the pandemic and that ran out. And so I was doing serve and I was doing a lot of cash jobs and whatnot uh, here and there. And then in the winter of, I want to say it was 2020, I got a job that brings me back to some of the cash jobs that I worked as a kid. I got paid pretty much just as much money as I have in the welding trade. I was making, I started off at like $21 an hour, but within a few short weeks, I was making 23. Like I got a lot of raises really quick working for this uh, outfit that, you know, uh, is paid to shovel walkways in the winter time and in you know the summertime they do like landscaping and lawn mowing and whatnot i was making pretty good money shoveling snow and yeah you know, like i say that takes me back to when i was a kid i you know used to do that for five or ten dollars a driveway anyways right and you know here i am as a grown adult you know shoveling snow for 25 dollars an hour so uh i did that for a little bit because it was extremely hard to find a job as a welder during the pandemic it's hard enough as it is it's a very uh niche tight market for welders here in southern Alberta there's a lot of competition okay very little jobs and then you throw a pandemic on top of that and that just makes it even harder I'll, I'll put it into perspective for you there's this one potential job I was scoping out during the pandemic and it had like 600 some odd hits on it oh wow okay yeah i got like a one in 600 chance of getting this job i don't know <laughs> i don't know if i like those odds yeah he was pretty good that that guy that i worked for uh shoveling snow but uh you know obviously winter doesn't last forever i mean it was good money for what it was it was nothing personal it just you know as serb was running out it just wasn't paying the bills so i found this job I'm working for a welding outfit <clears throat> here locally uh, they're just out of town that was uh, paying me less than I deserved. And I stuck that out for about 10 months or so. It was oh, wow. an abusive environment. It's a common theme here um, coming from yeah. snow working in the trades world <laughs> i uh worked for them for about 10 months because you know I'm caught between a rock and a hard place right i'm a single dad yeah, at that point in time you know being a dad it's no longer about me you know if it was just me in the picture you know i might have been you know working cash jobs or you know just comfortable riding, riding the serb train whatever whatnot for as long as the federal government would let me do such a thing but, you know, I have a little one to feed. So, you know, it's a bigger picture. It's more than just what I need. It's what's in the best interests of my family. So Charlton and Hill Welding, they had an ad up. Oh. Uh, they, they keep the same name, but it's under different ownership now. So it's the same name of the company that I worked for years ago. Okay. Different management and it's different owners. So the person who encouraged you to get into welding wasn't there anymore? Nope. Nope, he was not. He had okay. since uh moved on um he wasn't somebody uh i cared very much for anyways um he lied to my face multiple times in on multiple occasions he wasn't a very trustworthy guy and you know i'm not gonna like him i've worked a lot of jobs in my life starting in the taxable workforce at 15 years old and i've worked a lot of jobs you know being a tradesperson since i graduated high school at 18 years old in charlton and hill welding hands down, is still the best employer that I have worked for in the entirety of jobs that I have worked since I turned 18 years old. They're very progressive. They're very caring. They're very, uh, you know, I'm at a loss for adjectives right now, but yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. They're the best company that I worked for. And, you know, the layoff didn't necessarily happen on the best terms. I always told myself, you know, if things are different, if certain individuals weren't there anymore, I'd go back and work for them. Well, so I got me interview i got hired on in october 2021 i've been there as a welder not not so much a material handler um i've been there as a red seal journeyman welder ever since i will note though being a journeyman welder for this company that i had worked for years ago in the past i have cleaned toilets on the odd occasion <laughs> being a red seal journeyman welder and i've also you know uh, gone back to my roots as a material handler like like i say i go to work to work if you guys don't necessarily have welding work for me i've worked with the mechanics i worked with the electricians i also did some of that stuff as well years ago when i worked for them i i don't care but i get paid all the same yeah you know for an adult living with adhd it's good for growth and keeping my mind entertained like right. i'm not a journeyman electrician by any means but i'm sure if i got a friend to help me out you know i'm pretty sure i could do some electrical work in my house and whatnot maybe not so much by myself but supervised but yeah so it's good you know i, I got a, i got a diverse 
skill set. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a self-proclaimed jack of all trades. You can't go to school for that, but I, I dabble in a little bit of everything. And uh, I'm appreciative of my employer for giving me opportunities like that. It's not bad to work for, you know, pull wrenches for a couple of days or whatever, whatnot. And, you know, if needs be, clean the toilets for a little bit until, you know, work comes around. I got no problem with that. So. Sure. Cool. And so that's where you're at now. Yep. That's where I'm at now. And uh, I like it. You know, it, it's a struggle in the summertime. Any welder will tell you this. Um, it's like working on hell on earth, you know, when it's 35 degrees out, and <laughs> you're working with molten metal. It's, it's a constant struggle in the summertime to stay hydrated and whatnot. But, you know, my employer uh, pushes, you know, health and safety. It's uh, extremely important to them. So I'm allowed time. And obviously I take the time for micro breaks, to cool myself down and, you know, drink plenty of water, get my fluids in and, uh, you know, the bathroom breaks subsequently go with <laughs> drinking the amount of water that I do in a day anyways. So yeah. Awesome. So at this point, I uh, usually ask my guests the same question. How has your intersections of marginalization ever influenced your experiences as a worker? And that could be anything, gender, sexual orientation, ethnicity, religion, economic class, whatever. If that's ever been experienced, maybe that's something you want to share with us. Marginalization. Uh, I don't know. I am part of the working class. Um, I don't think my religion that I am on paper has uh, directly necessarily affected my work history, but definitely uh, being that I might, you know, some would tell you, you talk to some of my family members, like I say, I have problems with authority or I have uh, attitude problems or like I had mentioned myself, uh, you know, uh, being a snowflake <laughs> in, in a high demand trades world. Um, yeah, that has led to confrontations and, you know, maybe uh, being picked on uh, slightly. But yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not sure how to answer that marginalized. How about your experiences with ADHD? Do, do you see yourself as having a disability? as somebody who has ADHD? I don't know if I would necessarily call it a disability. I mean, I think it's classified technically as a learning disability, but I mean, no, I just... It just makes me hard to work with sometimes because, you know, if I'm not, you know, some on some of those slow days, um, you know, where I got a lot of energy to get out and I'm not necessarily doing it, working on projects for customers. Uh, I'm sure there are people I've worked with before. I can tell you, I get pretty annoying. Um, you know, I've had comments from people I've worked with over the years because, you know, sometimes a song comes on the radio and you just can't help but to sing, you know, like it's just <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody, for example. I don't know what it is about that song. I like Queen, but like every time the Bohemian Rhapsody comes on, I have to sing along to that song. Workers <laughs> before in the past, um, don't quit your day job. <laughs> if I was platinum by now, do you think I'd be welding? <laughs> yeah, anyways, has ADD prevented me from getting decent work? Or, you know, has it been a roadblock in the sense of getting a decent wage? Um, I don't know about that um, per se. I'm a, I'm a pretty good worker. And, uh, you know, even though I might not have, you know, aligning opinions with a lot of previous employers, I'd, I'd like to think that nine out of 10 employers would say, yeah, you know, he's a little bit of a wild one, whatever, you know, adjective you want to put there. But I'd like to think they'd all agree that I'm a good hard worker. I am a hard worker. Yeah. Cool. All right. Do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Final thoughts for our listeners. Um, yeah, coming coming from somebody who, uh, you know, would uh, like I say, I don't have any shame in it anymore, uh, being what people would call a snowflake. You know what, if that's what people want to call you, you hold your head up with pride and know that being referred to as a snowflake from people that, you know, don't necessarily understand what emotional intelligence is, you know, hold your head high knowing that, you know where your boundaries are and you know what you will tolerate and not tolerate anyways. And there's nothing wrong with being a little bit of a sensitive individual, right? It's all part of being an adult and communicating. I, you know, I think more adults, especially in the trades world, need to be a little bit more emotionally intelligent and uh, communicate their thoughts more um, effectively and uh, in, in an educated manner. Like, uh, you know, it, it's something I've learned through a process that I've been going through since uh, I got divorced that, you know, uh, anger, it's just another emotion like joy or fear or nervousness. 
for what reason anger gets a lot of uh you know fingers pointed at it a lot of people frown upon it so uh you know there's nothing wrong with being angry you know you just got to be mindful of your behaviors while you're angry you know is it okay for a guy to be mad at you because you messed something up at work sure does that necessarily mean they need to scream at you at the top of their lungs and call you uh, you know every name under the sun right um yeah just hold hold your head high you know knowing that you know being a snowflake you know means that you're aware of who you are and where your boundaries are and you know what you're willing to tolerate and not tolerate and don't think of it as so much uh, a condescendment as uh you know, maybe something that other people in the trades world wish they could be more like. Cool. And if people are interested in following more of your work, is there anything you'd like to plug at this time? Social media accounts, or if you have a blog or YouTube channel or anything like that? I, I do have a couple of social media accounts. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Jared Titherly Lang. You can find me on Instagram, uh, The Ginger Ninja Guy on Instagram or on Snapchat, just Ginger Ninja Guy. Cool. Awesome. Great. Well, and if anybody's interested in following the Alberta Worker, you can find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also check out our website, albertaworker.ca. And while you're there, you can sign up for our newsletter. We have daily, weekly, and monthly options where we summarize most recent news articles. And if you like this podcast episode, please rate and review it so that other people can find out about it. Every time you rate and re review, it bumps us up in the algorithm. If you want to support the Alberta Worker, you can also also visit our website, albertaworker.ca slash support, where for as little as $1 a month, you can provide financial support for the Alberta Worker to keep it going. And we depend 100% on the generous donations of subscribers like you. If you want to be a guest on the Alberta Worker, you can email us at podcast albertaworker.ca. You can also send us a DM on our social media accounts. Thanks, Jared, for joining us today. Thank you to all the listeners who are tuning in. And as always, solidarity. Solidarity. Solidarity.